Hey, morning guys, welcome back. Uh, this is Steve Arons here once again. Uh, this is part two of the most common questions asked about the Maffeto method, okay? This is from my point of view, for someone that's had great success with it so far, and um, has helped me towards PB after PB, although not massively fast, but massive improvements just from doing this one simple method. So I encourage you all to read the Maffeto method books, uh, the big yellow book, whatnot. But if you're just scanning the internet and wondering what, you know, if you had questions about it yourself, this video might be for you. If you've not seen part one, go back right now, watch part one, watch this one afterwards. Hopefully I'll have covered a lot of the bases. So if it sounds all right up the street, don't you go anywhere. Let's talk math. <laughs> Should I even bother with math? Okay, so math to me uh, generally falls for people that have maybe just started running who need some guidance of how to do it properly from the very beginning. That's a little bit less um, common than the other one, which is the reason I did math, is because I trained the wrong way for a couple of years, sometimes more. All right, so these people, They've been training wrong. They've not been seeing progress because they've been running too hard. Suddenly they've got to eight 30 minute miles or whatever, and they're not getting any faster, not getting any fitter. And I'm thinking, something's not right here. I'm gonna look online and find a way that suits me to be able to get fitter at running. And math is basically for you guys the new starters and the people that need guidance. So math is a guidance for people to find the right intensity to run at, okay? This sets you straight from the very beginning. Whether, you feel, whether it feels wrong or feels right, math is putting you in a position where you need to run slower than you realize, okay? So basically that is for you guys. Now there are some people that so it's really wet down here. There are people that have been running for years and come across math and think, why am I even doing math? Because probably the right question to ask. You probably know what you're doing already. You already run slow enough. You already limit your stress. You already get good sleep. You already look after your body on the nutritional side, hydration side. So yeah, that's a good question for you guys. Why do you need math? You probably don't. So the question the answer is, what do I need to do math? Why am I bothering? It's because you need some guidance. What a place to start. Okay, question number two, very common question. Why am I not progressing? What sort of things are making you not progress like you're supposed to do in the natural flow of math? Right, there are a few things. Like I said at the start, if you've read the book, you probably know this, but if you're wondering why, and just think you're running too slow too fast then this might be for you i can't go into great depth that's what the book is for but i can tell you some of the reasons all right so one of the main ones for myself is stress okay daily stress the daily grind work life everything in general that just never seems to go easy now this makes a serious adverse effect on your math heart rate in particular because it's raised from the minute you go to the minute you finish you're already starting off a higher area than you'd like to be than if you was de-stressed so stress is a good one something to work at anyway in life make your job a more enjoyable thing or find a job that's more enjoyable to you i'm not saying to make like career changes but limit the stress as much as you can with work um, don't stress out doing the running with life. Set out a plan that suits everyone in your family for you to go out and run. They know when you're going, you know when you're going. You've got time to get it in without it causing stress at home. Stress for your friends, any kind of stress, limit it as much as you can. Point number one. 
Right, sleep. Sleep is another massive one for me. I've got a nine year old who never slept great. It's getting better now. And I've got a one year old that wakes up a lot. Uh, just last night, I was up at 12, got back to bed by four. And I get up at half five to run to work. So, say no more about that night's sleep. It was not good. But that tells a story. As soon as I start running, my body's already tired. My heart rate's already high. The whole run doesn't go to plan. So stress and sleep. Okay, for some, the nutritional part, if you eat crap constantly all day, it's gonna make a difference. Although, probably not a huge one, but I'll explain more on that later. But it supposedly does, okay? And some are just hormonal. Uh, hormonal differences, yeah, how your body's built. So the key is to get all these things in the best possible position you can get them, okay? Once you've got all these in line, it will, help, it will start to get your math moving in the right direction. Okay, so think about that before you start running faster or running slower. It's everything in line with math that um, is gonna help you to get the best progress you can. Think about it. And one other part of that, of, um, of why maybe you're not getting the best results that I forgot to mention is honesty. By honesty, I mean, that means choosing the right number to run at and being honest with yourself for the whole process as into whether you are getting all these things in line before you decide to change numbers. So, are you honestly getting rid of your stresses? Are you getting the best night's sleep you can? And most of all, have you selected the right number to run at? Because a lot of people join math and say, this is too slow for me, I'm definitely quicker than this. Defeating the object or what? Like I've been there, okay? I took a lot of time to decide to put mine up because I've done all the relevant testing to be sure. And it was for the uh, the good of this channel to, you know, do try and do it a bit more scientifically. But if you just think you're better than the number you're given, then you're not gonna progress like you think you are. Honesty is the key. All right, point number three. Important one and something I've got to get off my chest with this one nutritional side of math okay do you follow the nutritional side of math that's a question to me so i'll answer first um no i do not in a nutshell trust me i've tried there's one thing one part of running that i struggle with more than any is the food right i'm not an absolutely terrible eater my weight is where i want it to be could be maybe half a stone lighter but if i'm heavier than this i'm still not bothered because it makes no difference with my running as in weight terms but it's such a boring um such a boring way to eat of all natural food especially when you work in a butcher shop like me and you could have any choose of meat you want but there's only so much meat and stuff you can have and veg and all that and honestly i'm a foodie and there's more to life for me than just trying to get fit and having a good time that way. I like to enjoy my food. And I do try to work psychologically and on trying not to overeat and trying to keep a little eye on how much I'm consuming and what I'm consuming, but it's not the be all and end all for me in my running. And that being said, I've had results. I've come down like nearly three minutes from when I started. So it's not holding me back so much that I need to look into that too much. That being said, I'd encourage you guys to try, try that way of eating to see how much difference it makes for you, okay? It's in there for a reason, it must work. There's a reason why I spoke about so much on there. Give it a try, have a look at his to-do, to eat and to not to eat things, and see how you get on with it. The end. Okay, the next point, and a very popular one, common one, asked by people via email, or via messages on old videos, okay? Is there a running schedule that I can follow to start math? Short answer, no, there's not. Okay, so the reason for this is Dr. Phil Mathtone can't just say, right, go out there, run four miles a week, uh, sorry, four times a week, covering 20 miles. Perfect, that's great for the beginner that's just done a couch to 5K, or is like overweight trying to lose weight, what you're going to do is knacker them up by telling them to do too much straight away. Okay, so if someone was coming to me and saying, I'm a complete beginner, 
I want to get fit properly. I've heard that math's quite good. Can you write me a schedule? Yeah, of course you can. No problem at all. So let's start with three miles per run. We're just over three miles per run. Do it three times per week for now, or even two, if that's how your body feels. So let's try and cover 10 miles a week, running nice and slow at the math pace, 10 miles per week, and gradually building up from there. That will be a foolproof plan for you to not overdo it. A second person would come up and say, I've been training for two years, but running too fast, it sounds like myself, running too fast, I want to train properly now. What would you suggest? Well, you will find one online, so let's go 20, 21 miles per week. I'll do my example. 21 miles a week, split between four runs or three runs, whatever you can fit in to your nice routine. It's yours, it's your personal routine. Okay, so 20 miles a week, gradually building it up by 10% every week or two. Another sound plan. So that is the reason you can't find one online. If you'd like me to build you one, please leave a message below or find my email in the listing and I'll do my best to write you one that's worked for me and will work for you. Okay, next point. Okay, my last final point and all important one that rolls on from the last question. Can I overtrain doing math? Yes, you can. You might not think so, but let's explain. So, you've started running, you're running really slow, slower than you used to or you think you, sh you are. You're like, do you know what, I can do this for bloody ever. Good, that's the right way to feel. But because you feel like you can do it the next day, which is a good thing also, that doesn't mean you should straight away. Right? You can overdo it with math. You can overtrain, overreach. And that's because it blends in with everyday life, okay? When I started math, if I would have done, I did three days a week. If I'd done five days a week, joined up with my work, in which I'm stood on my feet all day long, being quite manual, plus not getting good sleep, plus feeling stressed at the time, plus weight training, and anything you want to add in there too, it won't take long for your body to get caught up with all the activities you're doing. And you still need to be careful with it, like you do um, when you're just doing fast training, you know? If you do too much, you're gonna burn out. Same as this, if you do an accumulation of too much, you're gonna burn out, slow burner. But it will happen. Okay, so as with all running practice, build up slowly, start lower than you think, feel your body as you go, and play it by ear completely. As I say, I started at three runs, seven miles per week. I gradually went to four runs a week, getting up to say 30 miles as I built up slowly. And then gradually went up to five runs a week and made in my work runs. It's a slow progression of listening to your body and knowing what you could cope with to be able to go through the whole process without overtraining. Now don't get me wrong, you are gonna be able to bang out some miles. Absolutely you will without overtraining. But like I say, I was with all training, you can do that gradually and get yourself into that point where you can do it lots and lots, but your body's got used to doing it and it isn't gonna give yourself increased risk of injury and your endurance levels are, are just so high that it can cope with the load you're gonna put on it. But don't do it straight away because you will overtrain. All right, that's it for me today. That's probably the last of that series of um, common questions asked about math. Hope it's been helpful. If I think of any more, I'll do part three, but I'll have a little think tonight. That should be it. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. Please uh, leave a message on there for anything I might have missed that I could cover in episode three, if you like, and enjoy your Maffetone running the best way you possibly can. Thanks for joining me. Hit the red subscribe button below. Steve runs. See you on the next one.